our foster care system is shattered. And this podcast is about how we as a community can come together to bring about change, change in the system and changing the lives of children in foster care. Hi, my name is Rob Shear. I'm the founder of a national charity called Comfort Cases. I'm an advocate for children in foster care. I'm a public speaker. I'm an author of a forever family, but most important, I'm a dad to five of the most amazing kids. Welcome to the Fostering Change podcast. You know, it's hard to believe that season two of Fostering Change is coming to an end. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for a little bit of a break, but our next guest, oh my gosh. You know, I actually met our next guest several years ago. I was actually at a function and I heard her sing and my heart just pounded out of my chest. See, I had heard about her story. I had known that she was on The Voice. I knew that she had been in foster care and I could not believe that I was getting ready to meet her. And yes, I was a little starstruck. You know, Shireen has done so many amazing things. She has, again, a voice of an angel, and she goes around and makes sure that people actually hear that voice. Because, you know, somebody told me a long time ago, when you listen to Shireen, you truly do feel that you have the power to be part of the change. And that change is how we're rebuilding foster care. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome my friend, you know, who will also be performing at our very own Comfort Cases Backyard Barbecue Gala on De- on October the 3rd. And sorry, everybody, it's already sold out because we are so excited to hear her sing. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Shireen. Shireen, you're think, the one thing I love about you is that you have not given up on your dream and and you were in the voice and you know i know you've you've tried out for other things um and you just you have a new single out can you tell our our listeners and viewers about your single oh yes i call this the covid comeback because this is the song i wrote for covid it's called party like there's no tomorrow and um basically i wrote it because i wanted to have a song where people can have that feeling for when they come out of COVID. You know, what's the one thing people are going to want to do? They're going to want to party. They're going to want to get out, get out of the house, do anything besides being in the house. So the song is based on, you know, just having that moment in time where you you just feel free and not trapped and you get to just go out and party like it's your last day. And that's exactly what the song explains. In, in my instance, I'm with my home, with my home girls, you know, I haven't seen them in, in months. So we're finally together. We get to go out and we just have a blast. And yeah, and it's a good song. It's party like there's no tomorrow. And- I've heard the song and I'm, I'm listening. I'm telling everybody if you're, <laughs> if you're listening, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, um, go, go buy it, you know, go buy the single. It is a song that you will play over and over and over again. Because it does make you feel good. And it, and, <laughs> And Shireen, you're right about the fact that with COVID um, being where it is, I know, you know, for me as a as, as someone who's a, a public speaker and for you who somebody is an entertainer, um, COVID really affected us. And it affected a lot of our income when it comes to what we were able to book and what we were able to do. Um, you know, and, and by the way, I know that you actually performed for my friend, Ashley Brown, who is the founder of the Selfless Love Foundation. And Ashley and I go back many years. Um, she is amazing. I love her organization. Um, you know, but, but the reason I bring that up is because it had, it's had to been really different as an entertainer. I tell you, I've been going through withdrawals, <laughs> not performing the way that I want to perform. And um, it's definitely different because as a musician and not being your main job and it, and it just going into COVID and it cutting it off and them telling you, you can't go out and make your money. It's just like, oh, what do you do now? What do you do when that's the one thing you're good at? And you know, that's your money maker. And you got this this uh, COVID that's coming and stopping everything. I I tell you, I went through a little depression. I was sad <laughs> going through my withdrawals, and um, I just try to keep a high spirit and you know, like try to go on live and sing like that because it's. But even though it's not the same, it's definitely not the same performing in front of people. 
but you just had to make do what you do because I, I love the scene and I'm like I'm not about to stop stop <laughs> yeah and we don't want you to stop we actually oh. don't want you to stop you know I I realized as someone you grew up you know in in Iowa which is a lot different than you know the inner city of DC for instance where my children grew up at um did you did you notice that there was a lot of race issue when it came to to being a kid in the system compared to let's say the white kids that were in the system? I had definitely seen a difference. Like and I'm I don't know if this was the difference, but like when, when I was growing up in the system, they just wouldn't allow me and my twin to be together. But I'd see other, you know, couples, you know, that were not African American who got to stay in the home. So that, yeah, I did see that a little bit and I was confused and I always asked why, like why? That's all I wanted to know why. Why couldn't I be with my sister? But I seen other people, you know, got to be in the same family, so. Yeah, I, I don't think it's changed by the way, Shireen. I, I mean, I really don't okay. think it's changed. I think that, that you know, as a white privileged male, um, I know that I'm treated differently than the way they treat my children of color. I, I get that. And I and I do believe that, um, you know, the way people are brought into the system, it's the same thing. It's it's brought in. The reason I bring that up is one of the things that someone said to me about you, which you don't even know this, is that you are such an advocator when it comes to kids in the system by your voice and by your singing and i i will tell you they're right about that and you know and that you are an advocator for kids in the system by your voice because what you have done you know by being on the voice by continuing to drop singles you know by by traveling the country and performing at these events that you're traveling in and, and performing at prior to COVID, and now now you're able to come to our event um you're giving kids in the system hope um, and hope and realization that they can be just like you, you know, they they can be like you and, and you're doing it by your voice. How does that feel to have so many people and so many young women, by the way, young girls of color looking up to you and saying, you can label me by putting me in foster care, but you can't label me by the dreams I'm going to make. How do you, how does that make you feel? Oh, I, <clears throat> some nights I sit here and I go back and look at the comments or I go look at my messages and I read what people say and they basically say the exact same thing that you said. And I just take a moment and I just start bawling my eyes out because it's just so touching like you, the fact that you you're making these changes in people's lives it's amazing and the 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 one thing that excites me is that I actually went through it it's different from somebody to trying to tell you how to do it and they've never been through it beat somebody who actually it went through it and experienced it so when i'm messaging these people back and i'm letting them know giving them advice it feels good because it, i actually lived it and i can actually tell them you know and, and and give them encouragement and let them know that life can go your way life can go your way i promise you don't ever give up don't 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 let anybody tell you that you can't not do anything because you're in the foster care system or you know you don't have your mom or you don't have your dad don't ever let that stop you and just let that encourage you to keep going and the one thing i like to say that i just said is life can go your way that is my key keyword that I say life can wow. go your way wow what a way to end this this conversation life can go your way listen up everybody the fact is is that it's sold out so you all get to um listen to my friend Shireen on the fostering change podcast but I am sorry this year um you will not be able to come to the event because we have actually sold out and it's been sold out for weeks um <laughs> and we actually have a waiting list um people who are dying to come and to um bring awareness to the fact that no child should ever carry a trash bag in foster care, but also come together because I, you wouldn't believe the number of people that I know that want to hear Shireen sing. And she <laughs> is going to not perform but just one, but two numbers. Um, and so I am so excited. Shireen, again, 
thank you for being a part of the Comfort Cases family for so long. Thank you for all that you do. Um, you are truly an angel that was put here. Um, you deserve every single bit of goodness that is coming your way, my friend, um, because I believe the more good you put out, the more good you get. So listen, thank you so much. For all of you, please, 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 Shireen, how can people find you? Yes, yeah, so uh, my music and then me, I'm just available on all streaming platforms. You can Google my name on um, Shireen Callister. I'm on Apple Music, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. I'm even on TikTok. So anywhere where you can find music, just type in my name, Shireen Callister, and I will definitely pop up. Guys, listen, I'm telling you, it is worth it. It is worth it to purchase her song. I mean, it will get you moving. We all are ready to come out of this COVID lockdown, which is happening. And what do we need? We really need a good song. And her song is that song. Shireen, I love you, sister. And I cannot wait to wrap my arms around you um, because you literally inspire me and you inspire me to be a good human. So thank you. Everybody that's listening, you can listen on all of our podcast platforms. Um, you can also watch us on YouTube and please make sure that you do us a big favor and continue to be good humans. Take care, everybody. So, wow, what a season. You know, season two, there was so many amazing things that happened. Number one, we went to video. So now you can actually subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can watch us besides listening on all your podcast platforms. But you know what? It's time for all things to end and we're gonna be ending season two at this point. You know, we're gonna take a little bit of a time. Um, we're gonna throw on some of what I consider some of the best interviews that we've ever had. And by the way, I wish I could pick all of them and replay them all, but we are going to play a two or three interviews that we've already played. And then we will be back in November. That's right, National Adoption Awareness Month. What other way to kick it off than on our season three with our hundredth guest, our hundredth guest, which by the way, that's a huge surprise who this person is. It's a, somebody that I guarantee you, you're not going to even think that you're gonna figure it out, but I am so excited to have a hint, her, on Fostering Change for the very first time to kick off season three. I hope each and every one of you have an amazing rest of your month, and I look forward to talking to you in November. Take care, everyone, and remember, always do your best to be a good human.